In the past, most physiologists were convinced that the many smell sensations are subserved by a few rather discrete primary sensations in the same way that vision and taste are subserved by a few select primary sensations. On the basis of psychological studies, one attempt to classify these sensations is the following. Musky, floral, pepperminty, ethereal, pungent, putrid and camphoraceous. It is certain that this list does not represent the true primary sensations of smell. In recent years, multiple clues, including specific studies of the genes that encode for the receptor protein, suggest the existence of at least 100 primary sensations of smell, a marked contrast to only three primary sensations of color detected by the eyes and only five primary sensations of taste detected by the tongue. Some studies suggest that there may be as many as thousand different types of order and receptors. Further support for the many primary sensations of smell is that people have been found who have order blindness for single substances. Such discrete order blindness has been identified for more than 50 different substances. It is presumed that order blindness for each substance presents lack of the appropriate receptor protein in olfactory cells for that particular substance. Then affective nature of smell. Smell, even more so than taste, has the affective quality of either pleasantness or unpleasantness and this smell is probably even more important than taste for the selection of food. Indeed, a person who has previously eaten food that disagreed with him or her is often nauseated by the smell of that same food or a second, on a second occasion. Conversely, Perfume of the right quality can be a powerful stimulant for human emotions. In addition, in some animals, odors are the primary excitement for sexual drive. Then threshold for smell. One of the principal characteristics of smell is the minute quantity of stimulating agent in the air that can elicit a smell sensation. For instance, a substance methyl mercaptan can be smelled when only one twenty-five trillionth of the gram is present in each milliliter of air. Because of this very low threshold, the substance is mixed with natural gas to give the gas an order that can be detected when even small amounts of gas leak form a pipeline. Then transmission of cell smell signals into the central nervous system. The olfactory portions of the brain were among the first brain structures developed in primitive animals and much of the remainder of the brain developed around this olfactory beginnings. In fact, part of the brain that originally subserved olfaction later evolved into basal brain structures that control emotions and other aspects of human behavior. We call the system the limbic system. Then transmission of olfactory signals into the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb is very important. The olfactory nerve fibers leads backward from the bulb called the renal nerve 1 or the olfactory tract. In reality, both the tract and the bulb are an anterior outgrowth of brain tissue from the base of brain. The bulbous enlargement at its end, the olfactory bulb, lies over the cribriform plate separating the brain cavity from the upper reaches of the nasal cavity. The cribriform plate has multiple small perforations through which an equal amount of small nerve pass upward from the olfactory membrane in the nasal cavity to enter the olfactory bulb in the renal cavity. Close relation between olfactory cells in the olfactory membrane and the olfactory bulb showing short axons from the olfactory cells terminating in multiple globular structures within the olfactory bulb called glomeruli. Each bulb has several thousand such glomeruli, each of which is the terminus for about 25,000 axons from the olfactory cells. Each glomerulus also is the terminus for dendrites from about 25 large mineral cells and about 60 smaller tufted cells, the cell bodies of which lie in the olfactory bulb superior to glomeruli. These dendrites derive synapses from the olfactory cell neurons and mineral and tufted cells send axons to the olfactory tract to transmit olfactory signals to higher levels in the central nervous system. Some research has suggested that different glomeruli respond to different color orders. 
it is possible that specific glomeruli are the real clue, clue to the analysis of different order signals transmitted into the central nervous system then primitive and newer olfactory pathways into the central nervous system the olfactory tract enters the brain at the anterior junction between the mesencephalon and cerebrum there the tract divides into two pathways one passing medially into the medial olfactory area of the brain stem and the other passing laterally to the lateral olfactory area the medial olfactory area represents a very primitive olfactory stem whereas the lateral olfactory area is input to a less old olfactory system and the newer system then the primitive olfactory system the medial olfactory area the medial olfactory area consists of a group of nuclei located in the mid basal portions of the brain immediately anterior to the hypothalamus most conspicuous are the septal nuclei which are midline nuclei that feed into the hypothalamus and other primitive portions of the brain's limbic system this is the brain's area most connected with basic behavior the importance of this medial olfactory area is best understood by considering what happens in animals when the lateral olfactory areas on both sides of the brain are removed and only the medial system remains the removal of these areas hardly affects the more primitive response to olfaction such as licking the lips salivation or the feeding responses caused by the smell of food or by basic emotional drives associated with smell conversely removal of the lateral areas abolishes the more complicated olfactory conditioned reflexes then the less old olfactory system the lateral olfactory area the lateral olfactory area is composed mainly of the pre piriform and piriform cortex plus the cortical portion of the amygdaloid nuclei from this area signal pathways pass into almost all portions of the limbic system especially into less primitive portions such as hippocampus which seem to be the most important for learning to like or dislike certain foods depending on one's preferences or experiences with them for instance it is believed that this lateral olfactory area and its many connections with the limbic behavior system causes a person to develop an absolute aversion of foods that have caused nausea and vomiting an important feature of the lateral olfactory area is that many signal pathways from this area also feed directly into an older part of cerebral cortex called the paleo cortex and the anterior medial portion of the temporal loop this area is the only area of the entire cerebral cortex where sensory signals pass directly to the cortex without passing first through the thalamus then the newer pathway newer olfactory pathway that passes through the thalamus passing to the dorsal median thalamic nucleus and then passing to the lateral posterior quadrant of the orbitofrontal cortex has been found on the basis of studies on monkeys this newer system probably helps in the conscious analysis of order this there appears to be a primitive olfactory system that subserves the basic olfactory reflexes a less old system that provides autonomic automatic but partially learned control of food intake and aversion of toxic and unhealthy foods and newer system that is comparable to most of the other cortical sensory systems and is used for conspicuous perception and analysis of olfaction then disorders of smell disorders of smell like those of taste are either those that involve a loss of ability to smell or those linked to distorted sensation of smell loss of ability of smell is called anosmia while reduced ability to taste is called hyposmia a distorted sense of taste is called dysosmia or parosmia particularly when an unpleasant perception of odor is present disorders of smell and taste go hand in hand in the perception of a patient it is not surprising since both taste and smell are involved in the perception of flavor